I'm not gonna lie, that doesn't have the same effect, man. I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna yeah. be honest with you guys. I, I really. I, that that you know that was the longest thirty seconds of my life, man. Really and truly. <laughs> but welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome back <laughs> to the DVD TV podcast. This week has just been a bummer of a week. Our StreamYard account is about to be verified for put in the next four ten hours. Hence why we don't have any intro. So bear with us. But I can guarantee you the the comments will be fire as always, and the conversation will be always. And my two regulars, Beast and oh, well, well, let's start with Benny. How are you, bro? You good? I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm good. Better than this morning. Happy to do the pod. Feels like it's been forever. But yeah, we're back. We're back. Football is back. The English Premier League is back. Can be nothing but happy, bro. Nothing but happy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love it. I love the enthusiasm. I feel the exact same way. Big up, Aslam, once That's again. Up. Um, congratulations on your engagement, my you and your lovely wife. Wish you nothing but happiness, prosperity, and yeah, all everything, every, all much the blessings, and my your relationship continue to just grow and be strong. And that's about it. That's all I can say. Married life is easy, my brother. Say you saying it, yeah, and I'm in for Allah's happy wife, happy life, everything. <laughs> there we go. And of course, the birthday boy, the one, the only. Many, many more. How are you? You good, my G? Thanks a lot. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks, Davy. <laughs> is my year older now? I wouldn't say, but it does look a year older. Not, not <laughs> yes, man, yeah. But you can see yeah. from the last part to now, you can super see mass yeah. difference. Yeah. Yes. What's the, what's the <laughs> I think it's the light on my head. I think it's just it's away. Niggas, they love the Vaseline. <laughs> so I'm Thanks, Aslam. I'm damn near close to being the Undertaker. Dong, that's all that must happen. But yeah, I hope you achieve all your hopes, goals, dreams, and aspirations, my brother. Appreciate you. And yeah. Looking forward to Thanks, it. Thanks, my man. Gentlemen, you know what to do in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Like the thing immediately. Slap a like on the video and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Only one place to start. Let's get right into it. Let's not waste any more time. Penny, first and foremost, do me a favor. When it gets to 8 o'clock, let me know. Because then my, I will have light again and whatever. But if I, if I jump out, you know what to do in the comments. I just right? go on, bro. I just go on. That's me. On. It's the Anyways, best. guys, the reason why we are here, it is Derby weekend this weekend. And me and Bram were having this discussion earlier. Um, the question I want to pose is, which is the biggest Derby, the most entertaining, and the fiercest Derby? Maybe I'll start with you. you are we, are we going on just about... Area derby or uh, this is what I want to ask. yeah. Sorry, look, it doesn't matter what, what it is for me. The biggest game in England is like United Liverpool, that's the biggest uh, yeah, game. But, but no, no, that is, technically, it's not a derby for me personally. I'm not that much of a fan of the Manchester derby because I don't know any Manchester City supporters, so that band is not the city game, Mura 6 2. I'm going to get banter from you guys, not from a city supporter. That's me. A better derby, a bigger derby would, for me is the North London derby. North London derby is, I think, bigger than the Manchester derby. More entertaining as well. I mean, the city derby and the Manchester United and city derby. It's only now, what, the last seven, eight years, that's, that it can be called a rivalry. Before that, it couldn't. And... Now, rightly so, there are noisy neighbors and one of the best teams in the world. So, money-wise, if you look at the two squads and you look at the value, it would be the Manchester Derby. I mean, that's the billion-dollar game. But I'm not really a fan because of the fact that I don't know any Manchester City supporters, I think. Do you, do you, you said the North London, no? Um, and I agree with you in terms of entertainment, but Manchester Derby has also given up some entertaining games as well. Like you mentioned, the 6-1, the 3-2-1 that you guys Six, won at, at the Etihad, which, yeah, all, all that type of thing. But do you think it's because the North London teams have become so closer? Like, you know what I mean? Like, Spurs yeah. got better and we, we stagnated in the sense they caught up to us and now we're battling basically for top four. Do you think that's the reason why it's more entertaining? Yeah. 
That's exactly that. That's the reason why. Because mm. first Arsenal was miles ahead of Tottenham, and if you look at this, is the the, the, the the tightest and the closest that the two has been for quite some time. Because if you look at last season, the season before, the season even before that, you would say that Spurs rightfully so overtook Arsenal in the log, whether is with regards to the team, with regards to the way they play. But this season, it's more equal, I think. Because, I mean, the league is Arsenal's lose. <laughs> they are top of the log. And that the Gunners are, are in the best position to play Spurs right now. That's what I think. I don't know. Peace the How do you feel? How do you feel, which is the biggest derby in England? Of course, you and I have one thing in common. I can say is we don't like losing a derby. It's the one team you don't lose against. The same way mm. you feel about Everton is the way I feel against Spurs. Which derby do you think is the biggest one in England? I think for, for different reasons, people can give different answers. And you can't say that that person is wrong. I think it just goes down to preference. Because what you said, what Bram said, what Penny said, what I'm going to say... It all has backing this reason to why we're saying that is the biggest derby. And mm -hmm. the reason why I would say the North London the North London derby between Arsenal and Spurs is the biggest one because it's always been evenly matched. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I wouldn't say like, I, I say evenly matched in the sense of they were not like both the best in England. They were both mid-table teams and they've always been consistently mid-table teams in the sense like top four, top six teams. They've always been there. Yeah. Whereas our derby team, Everton, one season they're in the top 10, the next season they're in the bottom five. So for yeah. me, for the past 10, 15 years, Everton has never been up there as a derby team. Same with Benny said with City. It's been since they got their money, they became a, rec a force to be reckoned with. Other than that, United beat them on the best of days. Their derby team used to be Blackburn and Leeds and cuck like that. Those years okay. of Man City. Okay. So the only two teams that you can really put respect on that keeps that name up there, we had to move over to Liverpool and United to make a derby because that was more fan-related than area-related as to say it's a derby. And not that far apart, eh? Liverpool and Manchester, if you would look at it, I think if it's not for Everton, Manchester would be the nearest to Liverpool. Yeah, it's the bridge. Mm -hmm. I could be and that, Yeah. So, I, I, I would also agree with what both of you are saying. Or oh, I don't know what you said, Debbie, earlier, but the mm. um, <laughs> Arsenal, and, and, and Arsenal and Spurs for me is the, the most entertaining, because that was the question. The most entertaining derby comes with that two, that two games. Me and, me and Bremer both in agreement that it is the, the North London derby. But look, let's come on to it. Obviously, there is now another hot property um player coming out of Dortmund again i don't know how they keep on doing it as well they are and brilliant they are brilliant in this country no, bro no. Yeah. <laughs> this the yeah. sure I, I, the I, I, them, and Ajax, I, them and Ajax, i respect them so the next one to come out of there uh jude bellingham i read a rumor last week or i think it was this week i don't know this whole week i just been a shitty one but where he apparently said that he wants to join Real Madrid. But then again, I saw again Ben Jacobs on a pod today with um, Terry Fluor said that he hasn't even came out and said any of those. But the question I want to pose to you is, look, I think we can all agree that Jude Bellingham is the next hot property now. Yes. Would we agree on that? Yes, right now, most definitely. As, 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 yes. as the next island, but... The question I want to pose is, which team needs him the most? And I'm going to name specifically these four teams because me personally, I would love for us to have him, but I don't. realistically, we're not going to get him. So that's why I didn't even include us because I think we need a number six to improve on Partey. Eh? And in terms of progressing the ball out of midfield, he's the next best thing at this moment in time. But at the same time, the reason why I picked Liverpool Beast the only is I think Thiago right now is your best midfielder. But other than that, Fabinho has been stinking at the place since last season. I don't think you can rely on Mulderson being now James Mulner and Henderson. They've had their time, which is that's the reason why I purely put them in there. Chelsea mm. I put in there, per se, because of the whole Kante thing. I saw Kante return back to training today. But I mean, you and I, we all know Kante is not going to give you a full season. 
That's the reason yeah. why I put him there. And the only other midfield that they have got is Kovacic. I mean, now they're even playing Conor Gallagher in a number six and a number eight role or whatever. For me, it doesn't work. That's why I put Chelsea there. Um, City I put in there purely just because Alan apparently told him, come join us, that type of thing. I personally don't think that City need him. Personally, I don't think City need him. City have enough already. And United I purely put in there because... I think, Benny, you've been one of the people that, that have been saying you need to move on from McFred. Granted that you've got Casemiro, but I mean, in terms of longevity, he's 30-something right now. He's, he's 30 on the top. He's, yeah. he's going to be okay for now, but I mean... You can at least get three seasons, four seasons, if, 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 if Casemiro finds his form. You can at least get three to four seasons out of him. Yeah, but, but again, what I, what I like in the fact, what, what I think what, what Casemiro's um, signing did was it improved McTominay. Do you know what I mean? It did. It did. It, it did. Wait, wait, wait. So to the point where I feel McTominay is undroppable now. He's one of the first names on, on Ten Hag's team sheet. And he's going to play exactly. against City. Exactly. So that's why I put those four teams in there as well. So that's why I want to ask the question. Which team needs Jude Bellingham the most? Which team do you guys think? Peace it out I'll start with you. Of those four teams, I would say Liverpool. But I don't know. I don't think I need to give a reason for that uh, because you gave it already. <laughs> yeah. Because the the our midfield is struggling, and our results shows that our midfield is struggling. Yes, we can put it down to injuries or whatever, but that's poor. You don't. You can't use that as an excuse. You're a big club. You make provision for injuries. Of and course. if there's one team that is going to come and walk into, it's only going to be of that team. I, I don't see him walking into United because Ten Hag is not that type. I don't see Klopp being that person either, but the because of the need that is so big or so great by us, he will walk into that team. Because mm. of all the players that Klopp signed, no one just walked into that team besides Luis Diaz. He was the only exactly. one that came. Two weeks, he played and he never left the team. But all but I is like, Bellingham is world class though. I feel he will start st straight from the get-go. Mm. One of the first names on that team, she, that's Jude Bellingham yeah. for me now. I'm talking about Liverpool, but do you see him doing that by City? No, that's not at all. My point. Did Calvin that's, Phillips that's even play back for them already? Oh, but he's injured. Calvin like... Phillips has a soft shoulder injury. But oh, even, when, even, when fit, even when fit, he didn't start. Yeah. But I don't think he started like, a single game. The only team that is going to walk into and get to start is Liverpool, other teams that you mentioned. Even yep. United is not going to just take mm -hmm. him and start because Casemiro would have also started. He's also world class, but yep. he didn't come in and walk into the team. But my problem is, how is Liverpool going to look when the transfer window opens? What are you going to get out mm. of Keita from now until January? What are you going to get out of Fabinho? Is he going to turn the switch back to Fabinho of two seasons ago? Now come January, Keita is firing, Fabinho is firing. Um, Harvey Elliott is up there with the assist. Everyone is just ticking all the boxes. Jude Bellingham mm. comes. What happens then? At this moment in time, I would like appreciate Jude Bellingham. Like he can play on Saturday against Brighton already for all I care. What happens then? He's not going to sit on the bench. Mm. Because He's not yet. So that's the only reason I don't see him coming to Liverpool. Um, I see him going into City only because of the fact that they is star sitting on the bench there every week. Even the brain is mm. on the bench now and then. So yeah, it's exactly. not something to be where you must retrospect and sit there is something wrong with my performance and so I'm not getting into the team. If Pep wants to bench you, he's going to bench you. You can have exactly. two good games. The third game, you're on the bench because mm. he has that rotating thing about him. He will play all his plays and rotate all of them. And us fantasy managers know that because it's yeah. difficult to have a city play in your fantasy team because you don't know when Pep is going to do his rotation. So I would like for him, or I would feel for him personally, game time, Liverpool will be the best fit. And he's in England. But I don't see... I don't know if, if anyone else noticed it, but any English, like English protege that comes out, do you ever see them coming to... Liverpool. I'm not talking about Trent because he come from our academy. I'm talking about a Jaden Sancho, uh, mm. Wayne Rooney, someone that flourishes out and the world sees them. Do they come to Liverpool if they're English? Oh, no. No, it's not. I never. Harvey Elliott. Harvey Elliott. Where uh, does he come Harvey from? Elliot came. 
He came out from Fulham. Fulham. No, you, you, you sent him on loan at Fulham. They sent him on loan to Fulham. You don't see Harley Elliott. Name. Yeah, they sent him on loan. I thought he was signed from Fulham. No, no, they sent him. He on was loan. a Liverpool player. He was a Liverpool okay. player. Okay, but you mm. don't see a Jaden Sancho or a Calvin Phillips or mm. players yeah. big, big English names make it out there and then come to Liverpool, sign for Liverpool. You don't see that, and that well, is the reason Saka, why. What if Saka could be the? Why though? What about? Why do you think that is? I think it's, it's FSG. FSG yeah. tries to steer away from English players having to buy them. We rather make them. So if you get the trend, by all means, I'll take it. But I'm not going to pay 120 million for a Jaden Sancho player and then come and flop here at my club and then what then? But because he's English, I'm I think that's where these the, the, the over inflated prices for the English players that Liverpool yeah. just refused to pay, which United yeah. have no problem in playing. In playing. Exactly. I mean, no one would never have paid. We bid 90 million for Jaden Sancho, and that was rejected the season, the window before we actually signed him. No one would never do that. No, no matter who the player is, you, it's, it's I, unthinkable. I, 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 have a better, I have a better one than Jaden for you, Harry Maguire, 85 million for him. <laughs> <Right there. laughs> That's a motherfucker. I just had to throw that one in there, sorry. <laughs> But Perfect even so, football. even so, Liverpool would never have bid that amount for any player. Harry Maguire, anyone else that is English. No, they would not. Because mm -hmm. there is something called the English tax, which everyone is aware of. Everybody knows about the English tax. They are at least 30 to 40 million pounds more than what they're actually worth. And United yeah, just doesn't right. care about that. We paid 50 that's million for centre back now with tattoos. So yeah, that let's leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Benny B, where do you see him going? Where do you see him going? Jude? Look for me, Jude. Jude, Jude is, a, is a player that would be a dream for any club right now. He is brilliant on the ball. He is composed. The way he tracks back, he's box to box. He's, he's bold. He's just his attitude and his character is what every team would love to have. Everyone, no, I'm not just talking about the top six, six in England, talking about the Real Madrid's. The Barcelona's, the Bayern Munich's, he would fit in any club. And I feel that he's that world class talent that would just walk into a club, except for City. I feel that he would, he would struggle to get into the starting eleven at United currently. Yeah. Currently. But Jude is going to be one of the players that everybody wants. The right thing for him to do, I think, would be go to Liverpool because he'd be a legend. I think he'd be a legend anyway. But I feel favourites are to sign him is Liverpool. Even though I read in the week that he prefers United over City because of the way that Calvin Phillips and Jack Reddish are being treated at City. Which is not their fault. Mm. Mm. City's fault at least. I'm just posting the link in the stream if any of you guys want to jump on. Why the hell not the more the merrier. <laughs> if you guys are okay right. with that. Anybody okay with that? Yeah, I'm dead. No problem. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was your idea. Um... Link to join the stream if you want to jump on and have your say. Anyways, I, look. I just want to mention on this comment here, I saw a comment of, of Aslam saying, um, we in a different time now, Indo has been, no, not that one, he was one. So times have changed, yeah. something changed at the board. So I think we will spend this time around, but not every season. I fully agree with that comment also. Michael um, Edwards is gone. Yeah, Yeah, and the thing is, with um, Liverpool spending now, it is abnormal. We never saw, we, we thought, or we saw it as Van Dijk and Allison being a ones of because they were needed. Then we saw this a large change in salary that went triple the bracket that we normally pay for a player. So there mm. is issues, or not issues, but there is a change, like you were saying. But I, don't, I still don't see it happening. I think the Salah, because he was there already, it was an easy decision to just give him what he wanted because we didn't want to lose him and Mane in the same season. And the other issue was with Liverpool spending big again. It's an English player and I don't see Jude Bellingham being less than 100 million. I don't see They're it. They're talking about 150, bro. No. I was actually going to ask you, how much do you think he will go for? Ridiculous if it's 150. If you check, check the going rate, I won't be surprised if he gets 150. If mm. you pay 100 for Graylish, yeah. You can pay 150 for Bellingham. 
facts you can actually you can Come and he's never released clothes he has never released clothes he doesn't have a release clothes that's the thing he has never released clothes but look like if you had to pick three youngsters at the top of the game now and I don't want to come on to Mbappe and Haaland just before we Pedri. jump on to our Pedri uh, Gavi for me Pedri Gavi over and I don't even want the third one I don't even want to say, just give me Pedri and Gavi, I'm tight. That's my three. I love them. They are, you are, bro. Peace are only yours. Um. <laughs> of the oh, camp. How, how are we looking at that? In, for you, in your team, or in a 3v3 three, three three team, or in just three dream players, youngsters that you would want in three your team right that you support? Now, yeah, three dream youngsters in your team. Three youngsters in general. That's not in the team right now. Don't tell me Fabio Cavalio or Harvey Elliott. <laughs> fucking all. Obviously. I don't know why. I just thought he was going like, to say Fabio Cavalio. I don't know yeah. why. Yeah. It looked like he was going to say it, no? I don't know why, say but it. people always think I'm, I'm a fucking mad. Especially Benny. I tell him I like this like so much. He's going to start soon. He's going to be fucking the next Coutinho. And I can see that he's, the reaction I get from people when I say that they're like, you be fuck. What do you see that we don't see? <laughs> like, like, you, you talk you about this, bro. You write this, bro, too much. Like, people, the facial expression tell me you're writing too much. But I, I, I do feel it's something special. But if I go on worldwide, young who, who are you talking about? Cavalio. Cavalio. Oh, no, but, but Cavalio, you know, he is something special. I, I can see that. I can see that. And I feel that he's going to be. We just say that Klopp stays at Liverpool because things don't look too good for Klopp at Liverpool right now. Nah, he stays there. Uh, the Bruh, there's already Klopp out. There's already Klopp out. Who's so there's already Klopp out. Wow. Nah, bra. Bra, if you're going to sack a brother... We heard things that happen in football teams. We heard things. We heard things. Alan Pardew signed eight year and didn't even make six months after that. Ah, but you want to compare Pardew with Benny, Klopp? What did no, I'm not do? doing that. I'm just saying weird as shit have happened. I'm, that's all I'm saying. But that's all I'm saying. If we, if we lose Klopp, who's better than Klopp at this moment for that's us? That's what I was about to say. That's Nobody in the world. Nobody in the world. In the world. But that doesn't stop clubs. That doesn't stop clubs, Bista. That doesn't stop clubs. You're not hearing firing business. Especially not if you get the results. He won all the trophies he could have won in the five years. What would you want to this, bro? Bro, you don't have to sell crop on me. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I personally no, think I, that I, he signed that deal because they're going to want him to rebuild that team again. Yeah. I, I personally think that. And with a rebuild, signing like Jude Bellingham is not going to work because that's at least three to four players. If you're going to do a rebuild, you should talk about signing six to seven players per window. And a player like Jude Bellingham, that's 150. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. How's that going to help you, Rebo? Yeah. Gee, it's a good player to build around, though. It's a good player to build around, but you would take it's out your entire fucking... fucking yeah, exactly. You would take <laughs> your entire transfer... Kitty. Cat <laughs> 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 section, this comment section. I must this cuck. I'm not going to lie to you. I really must this, honestly. <laughs> But look, let's get into the season. Um, transfer window has closed. Um, check the ages of our players. Ooh, ooh, we're talking about 37 year old Mel and 49 year old Henderson. Benny, Benny, don't be that, bro. Don't be that, bro. Uh, whoa, what, what, what? I want to know what players are we talking about. The ages of who? Elliot, the Cavaliers, the Elliots, the Luis Diaz. No, I, I, but I, the future is bright for Liverpool with your kids. I didn't argue that. I would argue that. You mentioned, but, but when you see ages, you mentioned Malna. <laughs> uh, I was asking for clarity. That's what I was doing. I was he's asking like for clarity. A, he's like a, he's like a I was asking for clarity. Malna, the ages of who? Malna, Malna, is, Malna is like a Vodacom contract. You can cancel it anytime. <laughs> 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 Malna's contract. Thank <laughs> 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 you, play. <laughs> Hey, yo, welcome, good evening, bro. Pick up, pick up my G. How are you, my brother? You good? Good, good, good. How's things going that side, guys? Nah, all good. I would have been better if I had light, but hey, here we are. Yeah, my lunch. You one minute, baby. Timekeeper, say one minute. Yeah, okay, yeah. Here. <laughs> Sponsored yeah, by Rolex. Fine. My router is fine. My phone is charged in the whatever, so we, we run, we run. If I drop out, you know, you guys know what to do. I'm not talking to me, my brother. Where do you want to? Do you want to come in? Do you want to comment on anything right now? 
What I want to say is, Jude Bellingham, <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would agree with, 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 with Beister here. I don't think he is the player that can just walk into a team. Yes, he's good. I've, I've, I've watched him recently for England. I haven't watched him that much, and I've watched his recent performance. Dude, but I don't think he's that type of player that's just going to walk into a Liverpool squad with the type of midfield that they currently have. I think he will sit bench definitely 100 times. At City, yes, maybe, but also, like you guys said, with the squad rotation that's going on with, with City, you don't even know if I'm just going to start the next game, to be honest. Um, <laughs> nah, but I can't know. Tim's, he's Tim starting against United. He's definitely starting. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. But, but the thing <laughs> that I really want to say, well, that beast, I didn't actually notice that about the Liverpool youngsters coming out and the stars of the, of the, of the England players not coming to Liverpool. Um, I've, I've, I've never really noticed that, and that is actually true. Jude Bellingham is one of those, it's, 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 a, it's a give or take. Do you spend 100 mil and then he flops? Or, mm. you know, you, you don't know, he hasn't shown that he is 100 mil worth. He's definitely worth on, on, on a level, he, he doesn't have the talent to be world class, he can be on a level, but oh, I don't yeah. think he is worth spending 100 mil for because you're not really sure what you're getting out of him. Um, it's also if you look at if you look at previous we go back a little in history and look at the players that came from Dortmund to the league. We talked about Nuri Sain coming, he was nothing at Liverpool. And so, okay, you went from Dortmund to Real Madrid, nothing there, on loan to Liverpool, even worse there. We talk about Shinji Kagawa, that was the star of Germany, came to United, didn't really leave a mark that I can say. He was a, look at Christian Pulisic. You look at Christian Pulisic coming to Chelsea, one of the best in the German football, in the, in, in the German league, not really left his mark at Chelsea. You look at Sancho, who is, I think he's only finding his feet now, but it took him an entire poor season. And I mean, he was the golden boy of England coming to United. So mm. there's no guarantees that he's winning him. Yeah, there's no guarantees that Jude is going to come and be that star. It could take him a season, it could take him two seasons. He could never leave his mark. So it's the price, I think, is, is what is going to put a lot of suitors off, but nobody would mind having Jude in their team. Mm. Look, mm. I hear that, I hear that. Um, but look, I think we can all agree the market is inflated right now. So it is, yes. especially for English what players. Is, mm. What does that what does that price tag do to a youngster coming into the Premier League? I was thinking how, the same isn't, thing now. how isn't he enjoying his football in Dortmund now? He's playing his yeah. football because he's enjoying it. That's it. But imagine coming into the Premier League being the most expensive player in the world. And you're at that age. You're not yeah. even at, 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 at never left Pro Pogba. I'd never oh, lift Pro Pogba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Undertaker! <laughs> 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 yeah, the to celebrate it, man. Sorry, very unprofessional of me. My bad. Carry on. As you were. Carry on. Sorry, carry on. Where were you? It was really the talking. talking. Won't it affect his performance? Because for a young man to come there with a price tag and a label that you are the most expensive player in the world, and you are so young and you are in the Premier League, I feel it will affect his performance. Because there can, there can be so much pressure on him yeah. that he's going to think he's not doing what he's supposed to do. And he's going to try harder, mm -hmm. he's going to try harder, and he might just be a flop again. But if you look at his mature performances for England, no he looks like a lighty that can, 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 can handle the pressure. I mean, this is a kid that has been playing for Birmingham's first team since the age of 15. So he has that but, character, he has that maturity about him also. Really? And like I was saying, he's playing like he's 28. 15 years? He's, 15 wasn't a long time ago, it's four years ago, three years ago, he was 15. Yeah, he's still a lighty. He's still yeah, a lighty. He, he's, yeah, he's 19. he's 19. Ahmad, I want to ask you a question. Do you think he will suit the La Liga in terms of technicality? Because I mean, La Liga already has Chouameni and Kamavinga. Do you think he will suit La Liga? Bring it there, young. To be honest, it's, 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 it's rough there. La Liga is rough. Go play against Getafe on a, on a weekend. Do you think it's an easy work? That people sit nah, with 12 men behind the, with their manager and the, the crowd. <laughs> the, only, 
Their only goal. I don't know. You. If they get a draw out of you, that's a win for them. That is a win for them. I don't think he has. He, I don't think he'll <laughs> make it in La Liga. He has the likes of Suameni, Kamavinga, Pedri. Oh my God! Don't even start. Uh, Pedri, Gavi, Frankie, <laughs> Busquets, <laughs> Modric. <laughs> I can go on all day. He's way down the picking order. It's a it's a prestasi. It's a it's a prestasi. Pisto. But I'm the man of the calls. But I'm the man of the calls. But I'm the man of the calls. Thank you so much, Bradley. You've been missed, brother. You've been missed, be be Bradley. You've been missed. We could have not said anything about Bellingham and just put that comment on. We could have moved on to the next topic. <laughs> I'll say it. Thanks, Bradley. Big up everyone inside. There's light. Yeah. light. But look, <laughs> I'm going to swap now. I'm going to go on the house with the Wi-Fi. Um, just before I jump back in, I want to ask you guys a question. Ahmed, I'll come on to you as well because I want you to give me your take on Barcelona. Um, I first want to start by who has been your club's best player this season thus far? Worst and out of ten, how much would you rate your season thus far? I don't know, Benny or Beaster, which one of you guys are gonna go first before I jump out? I'll go first, I'll go first. I'll go first. Mine's I'll go. easy, mine's easy, mine's easy. Mine's easier. Mine is easier. Mine's easier. Mine's How's yours easy? easy. I rate right, mine two one. out of ten. Worst is Darwin Luis, best is Luis Diaz. Clar, go on. You wouldn't, you wouldn't go with Darwin Luis. I have Okay, yeah. For me, Darwin Nunes and for Binio, very close. For Liverpool. No, what do you is think? Definitely. Is he, is, he, is he miles away? Yes. Darwin no. Nunes has scored one goal for Liverpool this season. And took his sweat off and ran off after we were really leading back two goals. And he think it was the decider. <laughs> that won us exactly. the plate. That was dumb. That was dumb. For me, my <laughs> best player at United this season. Everybody might be surprised, but for me, it's Jordan Sancho. Jordan Sancho has been on this season and he's reaching the levels that we expect of him. And I'm not even going to mention the name of the brew for the worst. I'm not <laughs> no, going to do must, that. We must, went through an entire yeah. podcast. Okay, motherfucker, you're in the corner. did mention his name already. Let's just say it. Harry fucking Maguire. <laughs> How can you say he's your worst? Like, how's he not? How's he not? He played two games. How's he not? He played two games. He played two games. <laughs> three, and he lost all three. <laughs> Look, my thing is okay, okay. Special mention to Ericsson and special mention to Marcus Rashford, who and just wanted the, the month. Congratulations, Marcus Rashford. I would have said Ericsson about the intro. Lissandra Martinez, yes, he's up there, he's up there, but I'm, I've been extremely impressed with Sancho this season. I thought he was going to get bullied, eh? I thought... Mio's yeah, everybody did, especially after the Brentford game, I mean, especially after the Brentford game. I had my, 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 huh, my fears about going to the season with this guy, and he's proved me and everyone wrong, yeah, and they, the big test happy. for him is Ireland on Sunday. That's going to be his biggest test. Yeah. Yeah. I would feel that it's, it's an unfair comparison between Maguire and everyone else in that team because of the amount of games played and the amount of games he was involved in to say he's the worst player. I have a player that I had in the first part that I said was going to be flop of the season that played every game and he didn't surprise me. He, he was nothing magic that I know he can be. When he came there, in January, you talking about? He came there. Bruno. Who are you talking about? Bruno. Bruno. Bru oh. Mm. Yeah. Like, like I expected, we know what Bruno can do. And that is the reason why I said he's going to be my flop of the season. Because he doesn't seem to be that player anymore. And he has mm. it in him. And I don't see the reason why he can't be that player. But with the stronger players at United, God should have enhanced his game. And not be, like he's trying to hold. <laughs> he's like a fucking horse that eats grass. Because he's on the grass. It means his gear bad fit. Just show you how much wings he must have had in order to get this fight. But after Bruno has been pleased, his performance has picked up of a late beast, especially since he's been made captain. 
Standing captain. I think his performance is, is yes, especially against Arsenal. I think he was our man of the match. He was brilliant, he was brilliant against he Arsenal. Was. So it's not all doom and gloom. But I know I know he's his frustrations with Bruno, and I share that myself. Fuller no bad doom. Fair enough. Pisto, who did you say was your worst player? Darwin, you said, no? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. And how far would you rate your season out of 10? That's for five. Did Clark, you say two? Clark. You said two. He changed his I mind. Said, you said two, said, yeah. Did I say two? You said two I out said of ten. Two. You started with, I have a right to two out of ten. And then you said, Tower Nunes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at 8,005, a solid five, a solid five. So I'm talking, I'm, I, it would have been a six and it would have been a seven actually, had it not been for that loss to Real Sociedad and the start of our season, which I feel in hindsight was exactly what was needed because if you look at the victories after, after those two, which was Poole, Arsenal and Southampton and Leicester. So solid five, solid five. I would have actually, look, even if you said seven, it wouldn't have been bad. Like, it uh, wouldn't have been impossible. Would have, would have, yeah. Five yeah. for me, you can't rate Liverpool five and United the five. Right? It's just like the way I've seen. Liverpool season is way off. Mm. United is doing way better than Liverpool, I feel. But that's yeah, but it's, it's the early days, James. It's, 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 it's a weird fucking season. But yeah. Arsenal is stopped. Stop. Until now. Arsenal is stopped. That tells you everything. The question Allow is rating up until now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but look at it like this. Are we basing it on in terms of expectations? Because obviously before the season started, I, I actually still feel Liverpool to be second this season. Honestly, I still feel they can go on a run. And given Liverpool's expectations, Liverpool fans' expectations, they're running for the time. Yeah, I, I don't think so for me now. I can see as the season is progressing, I feel they are a midfielder short. I feel they are a midfielder short. And I feel that the, the mess of money is a lot bigger than what anybody else was expecting. I was, I was thinking, I, I was going to second that. I also, I, I'm not a person <laughs> that believes in, in superstition, <laughs> but I'm not a person believing in superstition, but we all heard about Klopp and his seventh season at the club. Yeah. And, yeah. and to be honest, right now, it's looking like it's going that direction. For for, for Liverpool fans, I really hope it's, it's not, but it, it does look like it's going it's going downhill. So why do you think that is Ahmed? No, I, I also wanted to just elaborate on uh, that. Well, no, I want to hear by him why he thinks it is. We all have our theories, Mister. Why do you think he's struggling that this much this season? And why do you think the seven year? You 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 also you pose a question to the question. What has he done since he's won the league and the Champions League to change the squad to better the squad to now? <laughs> Okay, I'll answer that first. When we won the league, the next year mm -hmm. we ended second. We and the year won. before. And the year before. Last year, you... last year we could have won it. If it wasn't yeah. for City and the yeah. comeback, we could have won yeah, the you, league. You could have won it. Yes. If, yeah. City, yeah. If, if, if Villa... So, my thing is, yes, like Benny just mentioned now, you are midfielder short. Two years ago, Benny said you need a number nine. Yeah. We didn't get the number nine and we were still title contenders. So... My mm. judgment went on to... But maybe that is the difference, Peter. If... In hindsight, that was the difference. That number nine. Never nine. Yes, that was the difference. Now, yeah, this season we got the number nine and look what cut me sitting with. <laughs> <laughs> my thing is, you know, you know my only theory, what, 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 what I think could be happening is, for me, when 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 Klopp has his team, that's his team. Though? Do you think teams have figured out that style of football though? Before before you before you go. Yes. 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 It's not. Is that no? Yes. Yes. Look. 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 Klopp would never have changed his style for anyone. We know this. He's gonna play you wherever in the world. He's going to play you the Liverpool way, the Klopp way. My thing is that rock and roll football that takes so much out of you physically, and he has his team, his core team. You score starting 11. They cannot physically run the way they've been running this consistently for what, four, no. five, six years? Five seasons, bro. They, they have played every single game available to them last season. Ran like no other team has run before, I think, ever. 
Mm. Physically, that takes a toll. I think that genuinely hurt them. I think that hurt I mean, them. Yes, because if you look at someone like Salah, Salah is not out of form. He just looks exactly. tired. tired. He looks tired. Yes. Exactly. And it's like Bradley said, no money, no party. The fact that he is leaving, they didn't expect this impact because it can be long lasting. It's the same like United losing Tevez and Ronaldo in the same season. They've never replaced him. Mm. Since 20, what? 11, 12? Mm. They've never replaced him. Penny, but I, I don't think it's of the physical money appearance that is doing that damage. I think it's more psychological. Because if you look at Mane's last season, there was many a games where he hardly played. And Diaz was mm. our go-to guy. He was the guy exactly. that yeah. from the left. And Mane was slotted in as nine because there was no place for you, bro. Diaz was our yeah. golden boy now. But he was class at nine, nine, though. But, but he, that was his, on his way out. And I think the, mm. the Mane Salah, Mane Salah, that has been our go-to as for the past three years. And I think him gone, it's not the fact that we miss him in like the goals of there, but just the fact that Mane can leave. We can lose mm. Salah, we can lose Mane. Agree, 100% Brad. Not really for season. No, when Maguire came in. <laughs> it's the third time you mentioned that fucker's name on this podcast, bro. I'm, I'm it's the third time. Team. It's three times too much. Maguire in the England team is a concern. No, that's what you say the whole time. What, what are they <laughs> playing England to keep on having Maguire in that team? Because I can think of 10 other. I can go fetch a defender out of the second division that is an English. I can play with the Maguire. What is it? Do you think that Southgate did this purposefully, Ahmad? I, to prove I his point. I, what point is I to prove? That, 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 that deserves to be in the starting 11 in that England team. That is what he feels. That is what Southgate believes. If he that's what Southgate believes. It's a, it's a different story. I mean, yeah. a leadership quality alone can't get you a starting in if you have back to back poor games. But, but, not back to back, back to back seasons. It's back to back seasons, Every look, every coach has his favorites. Don't you think that Southgate also has his favorites, Maguire? Yes, I believe. I believe Southgate now. Nah, these players have credits in the bank. I mean, Luke Shaw and Harry Maguire. Luke, Harry Maguire was in the Euro team of the of starting eleven, centre back. Um, Luke Shaw scored in the final. They, they, this credit is but he's going against what he said. He said that they, he's only going to pick players on form. Ninety yeah, percent of the England squad that he played. That's a pure. I felt the emotion in that comment now. <laughs> I do look like a healer there. I put it off, I will put it off. No, no, no. Oh, it's a beast, though. Me. I never knew if I could see it, you haven't been. He's talking about beast, though. But, yeah, but look. Oh, oh, look, while we edit, while we edit, obviously we're going to be streaming while the World Cup is on. Who do you guys reckon is going for the World Cup besides your own team now? Everything, everything I think one side. I think it's clear. I Argentina. think. Who? I think Argentina. I, I feel Argentina, Brazil. Argentina, I'd love it if that is the final. I feel, I feel Brazil, bro. I'm, I'm a Brazil fan, and I, because I, I can't say my own team, it has to be Argentina, my fierce rivals, to be honest. But I mean, I, had a, I had a picture I, the other I day. I seen one of the cousins. Out of Brazil, these nine players in that fronting sign up. Who do you choose? Do you choose? Yeah, that's a difficult side. That's a difficult part, though. Bobby, do you choose? But Brazil is attacking. They spoke for choice. Right, uh, right back problem. Mm. <laughs> 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 to be honest, I feel I, Portugal, Portugal, and Brazil for me is going to be the Portugal and Brazil team, team also. I, and don't, 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 don't discuss Netherlands as well. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, what about Holland? Holland or look and then this Belgium that can they never be discounted. Forms, eh? They had bad run of forms in previous years for World Cups, wasn't it? World yeah, Cup they, did. they didn't make it. They did. Yeah. Was it, didn't they nope. not make the last World Cup? Oh, Holland, yeah, they didn't make it. They didn't make it. They didn't play in the last. Gaal, yeah. That was a shocker for me. That was a shocker. Uh, oh, Van Gaal, Munir, Sprati. Um, 
<laughs> I'm gonna move you around here to bottom right. You look so weird there at the top, Vinny. We must leave you here at the bottom. Sorry. <laughs> bottom but, right. but coming, nah, back off the, <laughs> coming back to the ratings, I didn't even give my rating on Barcelona. Um, yeah, let's come on to that. Who's been your best player, worst player, and your rating this, <laughs> this far for the season? Best player by far, Pedri. Mm. I mean, this lighty is a beast. Yo, I can oh. I, I can't I him. when I look at him and I see a mini Javi. Even Javi said it in the postcard. I see myself in him. Like, I, yo, his control. It's looked like he's been playing this for years. Like, he's got years and years of experience. He's calm on the ball. He's chill. He gives that pin needle passes. Oh, he can he's finish. He's, he's on the next level. Worst player? It's, 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 it's quite... Because I have to okay. Let me not put it like worse. Because, like, I would rather say underwhelming because I have my own underwhelming player as well in my team, which is gonna shock you guys mm. probably. But the, let's rather put it like that. I wouldn't say worse player because you're not having a bad season. I think the one game that you lost this year, I think you should have won that game against Bayern Munich if you were more clinical in that first half. Yeah, it's just even the Lewandowski. Ah, yes, I think <sighs> when I looked at Arthur. Nobody spoke about, <laughs> yeah, you guys lost to be fine again. I miss that. Everybody spoke about, <laughs> Everybody spoke about how well we've well we been getting Got it? I'm not doing this. What are you doing, bro? Making macaroni. Sorry. Alex Van Porridge. He said, <laughs> <on the> <laughs> <laughs> It sounds pretty good. It's a tough choice wow. between Leva and Pedri, but I think Pedri is just a, a class above because we all know that Leva is a world-class finisher. It's, just, it's clear, but I just feel hmm. Pedri, Pedri is a meister in the mud. He's making the things happen. For me, worse um, or underrating is Ferran Torres. He's, he's there, but he's, he's not finishing. Yes. He's the wise man. <laughs> it did sound like Chita. If you think of a fucking chip, that's going to hit a plastic bowl. That's going to sound like it. Chita's going to be the first fucking chip that's going to come to your mind. It's dead not going to be in this match. I'm pouring the porridge in the bowl, but I'm doing it behind the camera because he's standing here showing because he's not allowed to make a noise with the sign language. Now he's making <laughs> the porridge. <laughs> <laughs> so, you for Antores, um, and no special shout out for Usman Dembele, though, Ahmad? Whew, um, it's, it's tough because we didn't have a bat, and we actually, as a Champions League in the league, we've been unbeaten. We drew our first game and then we won the rest with an average of what three, four goals a game. I think we're doing fantastic when Usman Dembele, I knew last season, I already knew when I saw him step up last season, I knew no, that's why I got his contract. And the fact that he decided, and the fact that he decided to, to, to take that drastic drop in salary means that he actually wants to play for Barcelona because he had suitors throughout the world, but yeah. he chose to sign for Xavier. And, and it shows, it shows. It does, yeah, I mean, it does. You're the amount of assist that he has, and not only that, the fact that we can switch wings, everything, every now and then between the game, you'll see Rafinha go to the other side, Dembele to the other side. Dembele is yeah. left-footed and left-footed. And that is a huge advantage. He can give a dangerous cross with his right foot and left foot. So you as a defender can't push him onto his weaker foot because he doesn't have one. He doesn't have one, yeah. So, so when a defender faces him, you don't know if he's going to go on the outside or if he's going to go on the side. Because he can do both ways and he can do something on both positions. Okay. So he is fantastic, definitely. But I still say Pedri is... Just nah, on a world class I level. couldn't agree with him more. Look, I'm me as a French supporter. I'm excited to see Osman because I feel when we take off the Griezmanns and we're bringing on Lili Lilian Turem's son, it's not the same. Man. And Kingsley Coman <laughs> coming on, it's just a, it just doesn't sit well with me. There's no clinical, there's no end product with him. So I'm looking forward to seeing Osman. My best player for Arsenal this season, this is going to shock you guys, Karena Jaka. I yeah, I, I can believe it. Full of them, I can believe it. Look really? at your faces. <laughs> uh -uh. I can, I can believe it. Look, look, look at it like this. We've all watched the All or Nothing documentary. I'd like to think most of us watched it. We can all agree that he is the unofficial leader in our team, number one. And mm -hmm. the fact that he's playing in a new role, I think 
the role that he plays at Switzerland, Nado Tete has put him in that role. I mean, look at the last game. He was given the armband. Nobody minded. They sang his name at the end. He was outstanding. His whole season has been consistent. So I'm going to give it to him, special mention to Gabriel Jesus and Saliba and all of that stuff. But I'm going to give it to Granite. My worst player thus far, and not because I think he has been the worst. I'm going to go again with underwhelming. He is Buka. Ah, ah. Buka Ayosaka. <laughs> I wasn't going to... Special mention to Benjamin. Nah, like, bro. Benjamin, has, Benjamin has been well done, doing well on the right back. Yeah, but Saka's yeah, not been yeah. poor. But Saka's not been poor. I think he's been very underwhelming. I feel... Man. I feel very Saka, because the goals... He doesn't have goals to his name. I don't think his yeah, performance has been that bad. He's yeah, not been especially against United. But... Assist, but... Oh, give me a you saying because of... Compared to the other players' performance in the team, compared to his, he's a he's a bit yeah. poor. Is that why he made that, that choice? That's uh, what that's okay. what I'm saying. Yeah, compared and because to that he set such a high right. standard for himself in the previous seasons. And you expect yeah, more from him. I expect, yeah. You expect more. That is what I was. Oh, okay. That was uh, what I was going at with the Bruno. Why I said Bruno was that same reasoning. Yeah. Yeah. When Bruno came to United, he was yo. I loved watching him. Now it's. You don't even know if he's on but the I feel since Ericsson and the two of them playing more together, they are both getting better. Um, it all actually looks proper now. Especially McTominay. There. McTominay is putting in shifts every week, box to fucking box. I so said, much so that he's keeping Casemiro's with him. I said McTominay is a classy player. You just need he to has the potential. Him. I but I just know Ericsson is bringing everything out of him now. Ericsson is what we wanted Pogba to be for United. That's mm. that's what we have in Ericsson now. Mm. The thing that you got this guy on a free is brilliant. Pogba just the whole ego situation with Pogba. Man. Well, Pogba just fuck Pogba, man. That's it. But let's um let's preview this weekend because it is Derby weekend. Derby weekend. Where do we start? I'll start with Benny B. I'll start with you. How do you see this one going? Positive signs under ten. Huh? I feel we, we don't have the team to 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 beat or to hurt Manchester City. Manchester City is still Manchester City. We are still a team in a rebuilding phase, and like I said at the beginning of the season. There's going to be games that's going to be it's going to get a lot worse before it's going to get better. And I feel that this is one of those games. We'd be lucky if we get a draw, to be honest. But it's 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 a battle between Ireland and Martinez, I think, that is going to make or break this game. City has brilliant players, but if you look at it through the spine with Edison, with Cancelo, with the Brain and Ireland, if you can keep them quiet, you can this you can make something from City. But the thing with Ireland is you can touch the ball twice in the entire game. And that one opportunity, that second opportunity, and that third opportunity, mm. you can score a trick in five minutes. That's how explosive he is. And if once you lose concentration, you are done. You are done. We don't know who's starting up front. Ronaldo's form has been piss poor. He's been booed in Portugal. The media is turning against him. He's lost his yard. I think he's lost his strength as well. That he's just low on confidence. He's, he's almost he looks low on confidence. He had, he had multiple opportunities against Spain. He just looked like he was a yard short. I don't know if it's match fitness or if it's finally age catching up, but I don't feel that he should start. I think that they won't start him even if Rashford and Martial is injured. I don't think Ronaldo will start against City. Because I'm sure Eric has his way yeah, that I he saw wants to play. But Marshall didn't train, so they might be major. They didn't train. Oh. They didn't train. But if Marshall plays to, trains tomorrow, or Rashford trains tomorrow, his devs playing on Sunday. Mm. I'll tell you that much. Mm, okay. So it's it's tight. It's tight. I'm going for a two-two draw because I think we'd be lucky if we get the draw. And the far off predictions worked for me thus far this season, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say six-two. And I don't believe that we, I don't think that we're going to get the back by City, I can tell you that much. Mm. Because our back four is basically our back four, our midfield is our midfield. It's going to be Sancho and Anthony on the right and on the left. We just don't know who's going to play down the middle. Mm. I'd love for Ericsson to play right next to Scott the way he's been playing. And I don't want Bruno playing that false time because he's done it 
previously and always been piss poor. So it's difficult. It's difficult to say because with City, they have John Stones out. They have probably Laporte maybe coming back. So that's also, is Ake going to play on the left against Anthony? Mm. Is Cancelo going to play? Is Walker going to play? We know that Graylish is fit. We know that Calvin Phillips is out. We know that they have no injuries besides John Stones and Emmerick Laporte, I think. So they have a full squad to choose from. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. But I think a draw would be best for United. We'd be lucky to draw. Fair play. Peace to the Escobar. How do you see it going, my bro? I would love for United to win them. But I don't see... De Bruyne is just something else. I, I watch these Belgium games and he's just not the normal human being. He's like that machine we used to speak about when Ronaldo came onto the show. Like, this is not a human. He's something else. And that's how I feel mm. about De Bruyne. He doesn't look the part, but when he gets the ball, he does stuff it. You don't expect him to do. So I think he's going to control it also. And Sorry, Bista. Be Bista. You told me about Malaysia playing in a black three in the place of a black three. <laughs> was it not? Was it was two blacks in Stamba and, and Malaysia. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I apologize. I apologize for my redneck, my redneck roots. <laughs> you told me about the black three and I actually went to go look at it and now and I saw how Malaysia played against the brain and actually kept him out of the fucking game brilliantly. Mm. So I don't know whether Eric might even try that, but I doubt it because the system that has been that has been working is the system that is going to probably play going forward. But and the, last year, the brilliant game against the brain. The difference between uh, Belgium and City is you have the brain and you have Haaland, but Belgium is yeah. here Nacho and the brain. So you can close the um, the brain. I don't know for how long because you can have an order solve here. You can have. Belgium yeah. had Hazard on the one side. They're going to have Bernardo Silva or Graylish or Maris, whoever they use. But Haaland, like we saw that, that last game at City played, he had two touches in that whole game and it was both goals. Mm. And that that's is the, the dangerous thing of City. That's the difference. And that's the difference. Yeah. yeah, that's the difference. So Haaland can have three touches in the whole 90th minute and still get man of the match because mm. he scored two decisive goals. And that might just be the thing on Sunday. But I see City bossing the game, like from the beginning, like just going for it and controlling the whole game. With the We're just going to play on the counter. We're just going to play on the counter. But we are City definitely going to play on the counter. City plays high line, and that's going to help against... See, United is going to do good against teams that come out to play United. No. We're going to, no. like I told you, like I said, we're going to pass Arsenal for that reason. That killed yeah, us but, in this winter. But who, who killed us? Who killed us? It's Rashford. That counter mm. suits Rashford. Yeah, yeah who's going to yeah. be that Brana? That who's going to be that? Now, who's going to run onto that balls now? That from when Lindsay There's not Ronaldo. It's like Bradley yeah. said, he wants us to play Langa up front. He's a good finisher, but he's no number nine. He's not going to. Do you want to put Langa up against Diaz and whoever City plays next to Diaz? Nah, I wouldn't. Hmm. So I see, uh, I'm going to go 2-0 City. Fair I'm not enough. even going United a goal. Fair enough. Fair enough. I don't think United will lose, though. I I think it, it's going to be a draw, actually. I How much know. draw? Sorry? 1-1-2-2-3-3-4-4. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. Um, definitely no, goals. No. Both teams have goals in them. I'm going for 2 all. <laughs> I'm going for a 2 all. Ahmad, how do you see it going, my bro, before we come on to your game against Mallorca? I know, Bradley, but I'm just talking about him as a number nine against Diaz and whoever the fuck it decides. I understand that. I understand that. And I fully uh, I, understand I'm, that. I'm in the same situation if Gabriel Jesus gets another yellow this weekend. As he's out yeah, but you have Eddie and didn't get your, Who do we have as a number I nine to come on? against Van Dyke next week. Are you nuts? Yeah, fuck no. <laughs> no yeah. That is a problem, bro. No, it's a Eddie mess. Murphy. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Murphy. I know. I to do so with Martial. <laughs> and it's going to be Murphy's lawyer that says he gets that yellow card against Spurs. He's going he's gonna to look at the fire. I think mean, it's going to. It's going to be Murphy's lawyer and then Eddie Murphy's going to start against Poole. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm at prediction for the <laughs> 30, 30 and, 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 and United game, the Manchester derby, before we come on to you and Mallorca. To be honest, um... I have to go with City for one reason. 
I think United definitely has the quality to 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 put one against City. They do have, <laughs> they do have the quality. It's gonna be a two one at least. City. United can score. Goal, <laughs> again. It's gonna be a lucky goal. To be honest, I'm gonna predict it. United's gonna get a goal, but it's gonna be a lucky goal. It's gonna be some stupid. Hey, rather say you're not gonna score, then tell us we're gonna score by luck, man. Rather <laughs> stick to your shit. Be a man about it. Like he used to do that shit. He don't see United scoring. You can't go and say no. they can score, but it's gonna be a luck. Fuck that. They can score, they can't. It's not luck. We don't say it's the ref or something. No, it's not going to be ref. They're going to score a goal, but it's going to be a cuggle. 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 Yeah, Bruno scored more to scream over him outside. Oh, fuck. I'm the 90s. Come on that next fucking part. I'm going to look for you. No, but I think I think City's midfield is going to control the whole game. That uh, whether he plays Gunduan and Bernardo, the brain is definitely going to play. But I think City's, City's midfield is going to control the whole game. And, and United's going to look to counter. But I don't think United's going to have much of a say in the game. It's definitely going to be a domination of City 2 1. Probably like 60% position. I feel so. But I also write our midfield now. I actually write Bruno, Christian Eriksen, and Scott. In the second half, probably Casemiro. I think I look I like that myself against basically any myself in the world. Start, yes. I feel like myself is more balanced as well. And we have the option of Casemiro. We have the option of Fred. We have the option of Fred and Casemiro. It's, it's different, it's different things that you can do. I really think Casemiro should start. I really think Casemiro. Uh, uh, not, not the form that Scott is in now. Not the form that Scott is in now. He's untroppable, bro. Yes. Casemiro is another center back and another center mid and another center attacking mid. All in all, I feel I'm that's Scott now. In... <laughs> I'm serious. I feel that I feel like it's Scott now. The last four know. games, the last five games, Scott has been won, bro. Okay, but he's doing yeah. exactly that. Do you think he's it's, 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 uh, the the speed and the physicality of the English game that he still needs to get used to though? Because yes, yes, he's gonna come right. He's gonna come good, and it's also a different system. You may you must still learn Eric's system. Ah, fair mm. enough. Mm. Love that. Fair enough. Ahmad, before I come on to Liverpool and Brighton, um, Mallorca, Barcelona, how do you see it going? Mallorca is laying 10th in the league. You guys are second chasing Real Madrid, of course. How do you see it going? <laughs> I don't know. We can start. We have so many injuries that popped up now. Memphis is injured. Dekta Bellerin is injured. Araujo is injured. Um, I think we might have to forcefully play <laughs> When even Brad is talking, that we laughing. Brad is not speaking this way, he's just laughing at me. But when even Ahmed is talking, I'm a, I'm a, even yeah. Brad, no, every time, like every time, no, he must say something, and then we all like. Don't see the comments. I don't know why. But I agree with everything Brad is saying. Scott does look like a unga before every guy. He come out because of aggressive, Brad will be by the face. I only only could do that. That's when you didn't buy them as tell us for them. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's low chilling. I want to get into that one. It's low chilling. You know how warm this beer is tasting, my bro. But brother, man, we're not laughing at you. We promise we're not laughing at you. Yeah, Just get that shit out there. We're not laughing at you. Carry on. I know it's easy. <laughs> Mallorca, I, I actually think if, if we don't get our defense right, we're going to have a problem. Um, Because... I'm feeling very sketchy of playing Pika. Javi already told Pika, you're the last choice. Because Arako's is out, very, no? Very Arako's out, no? He yeah. He's successful uh, surgery now, but he's still out. Uh, mm. He's out for a couple of months. He might not even play World Cup for Uruguay. World Cup, yeah. So, um... I'm like ESR. He did the surgery now in order to be fit for the World Cup. We're going to see, actually. They're going to see now with the medical test and stuff, if he's actually on that level, how the surgery affected him. They said it was the... So we'll see. Um, for us at the back, Christensen, I I don't rate him any bad, but I don't rate him good either. He, I, he didn't play enough for me to say that he's good or bad, but when he's played, he hasn't done anything wrong. So I'll take it as a positive. We might have to play PK, Hector Bellerin, and obviously the guy that's keeping Jerry Alba on the bench, Alex Valde. Whoa, mm. impressive. He's to, put, to keep Jordi Alba, a Spanish international, on the bench as a lighty. Mm. He's 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 been so vital. He he's doing Jordi Alba's job ten times faster. 
Because Jordi Alves obviously is he's, he's listed as a Yeah, he's, but it's, uh, Jordi Alves is also coming to an age now and yeah. he's been doing that for Barcelona. He's been literally one of the best left backs in the world for a very long time. So it is yeah, time yeah, that Jordi Alves. Did you see his game? Yeah. His international game where he scored. That was a good Jordi Alves <laughs> oh, yeah. performance again. Exactly. But I think we're going to have to rest most of our players because obviously um, the weekend after that, in the world week, we play like Inter Milan in Champions League and then we play El Clasico and then we play yeah. Inter again and then we play yeah. Atleti and then we play Bayern and then we play Sevilla. So we have mm. tough, tough features coming up. I think... No, yeah, it's going to be more than that. That's like every single game. I'm going to add that today. There's a lot. There's La Liga is going to wreck you. Like, wow, it's, 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 it's passes. Fields. This is our this is our, our month to prove everything that we've worked for. This is our toughest fixtures for the month. A whole month of tough fixtures. Besides the Mallorca game, I feel it's, it's this is going to be the month where we need to say, show the world, show the people that we are We're here, we're here to compete, and we are back. Um, Remember the six weeks up until the World Cup now. Exactly. So you have like all your fixtures up until the World Cup now is. Yeah, but, I mean, but I mean, B. Sorry, 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 to word, I mean, sorry to break your word, Benny and, 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 and Ahmad. But do you guys, don't you guys feel like that's like that for all clubs right now in the yeah. over? Like it's like nine games each. Yeah, but, but do you have those fixtures though? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but you, you, you. Inter. I might be, I might be El Clasico. Right. Inter. Atletico. Bayern. Sevilla. Bruh, that's like all the games. It's. Yeah, but look at us again. Look at us again. We play Spurs and 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 Liverpool, and we were gonna get City also. If that game is postponed. Yeah, but I mean, even yeah, you guys, you play City and you play Chelsea also soon. Yeah, we play Arsenal, oh. City, and Champions League West Ham. We play Arsenal, City, West Ham, and three Champions League games, you which is also must win for us. So, so everybody like that because look after Mallorca. If I look at it here, we have Inter. On the Tuesday, same weekend, we have Salta de Vigo, which is not an easy team. They like slatting us. No, away. And then a week after that, we play Inter again for Wednesday. Then we play El Clasico that weekend. Then the following week, we play Real in the midweek. Then that same weekend, we play Athletic Club. Then that following week, we play Bayern. Yeah. And then that weekend, we play Valencia. Lekker. Oh, but we. Lekker. Yeah. Okay, now that is a sticky one, Benny. I take that comment back. That is. A yeah, bro. It's e. And then it's World Cup. And then it's World Cup. So, 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 so this six weeks can make him break Barcelona. Oh. Definitely. Definitely. You could be knocked out of the Champions League already by the time the World Cup comes around. Mm. Exactly. And the thing could be it's possible. Is, we already have players injured. Yeah, That's and who took to cover the Champions League to the Europa? <laughs> I don't think none of you took that. Your prediction, Ahmad, before I get to Liverpool and Brighton? Um, Barcelona's going to stick it through 3-1. I think Mallorca is going to get a goal of us. Um, mm. If we're going to start PK. PK is like Spanish Harry Maguire for me, to be honest. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's getting to him. He, he can't pass from the back. He can't play from the back. He's not fast enough to track back. Um, I think Mallorca definitely has some pacey people to, to, to sit on the counter because we're obviously going to sit deep, um, play higher up, sorry. We're going to play a higher line. I think we're going to go with a 3-1 for Barca. Been, uh, for the amount of time, Harry Maguire has been mentioned on this part. I love it. I'm actually going to put up for that. <laughs> and every time, then every time, Benny just dub back here. But... Fuck that, man. Brighton, Liverpool. <laughs> Right then, Liverpool, talk to me, my guy. How are you feeling about going into this one? Um, and must have feel like ages hey, since your team played. But one thing I must say, what I like about Liverpool is the season that in times where you think, okay, now they're down and out, they, they keep going to the end. Like, if I look at the mm. Champions League game that you guys played, you guys keep going. And I firmly believe you guys have, have nothing. It, it, it takes nothing for you guys to go on a run, a 10-game run. As, and I mean, mm. your players are coming back now, so... For me, I can see you slapping Brighton. Um, it's an mm. end them, if I'm correct in saying that, right? Yeah. No, I can yeah. see you slapping them. I mean, mm. they have they replaced Potter yet? Lalonde. I just said, they, they, you want to know? <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they have the manager. They have the manager. Some guy from 
can't remember. That is no longer the law now. Okay, cool. But they, yeah, I think they got a nine international mm. um, break. Yeah, but be it on it. Uh, give me your thoughts. <clears> how you feel about it? Um, confident going into it this time around? How do you feel no, about it? Just before? Actually, I am. With Brighton being so high up in the log, it's going to be a big thing going into this Brighton. You can't say it's a small fixture anymore because they're up there. Mm. And you must yeah. respect mm. them for being up there. Right. So I'll um, agree with that. I, I wouldn't say it's an easy fixture. But it's one that we should win, regardless of where yeah. Brighton is laying. So with the run that we have, we need this win. Like this is like any game that we get now, next few games, it's a big game. We need to win it. But the main thing yeah. I feel is the convincing, like first off, kill it, make the subs, prepare yeah. for Rangers next week, Tuesday. Because that is our main thing now. Our Champions League, we're also not secured, so we need to step up there as well. So I think we need to go out to Rangers uh, to Brighton, go for the kill, do the changes. I want Nunes mm. to actually start against Brighton because I want him to come be part of it. You're playing shit, but we bought you. So you need to come into the system mm. as we bought you for this reason. Bobby can play how good I need Darwin to start and play and just get the feel of English fucking football and take off the, like, Let's start playing already, man. Like, he hasn't settled in. I didn't expect him to settle in within the first month. But you can't be this piss poor and disorientated in the in a new league. Like, mm. for the type of player that he is, he's so sloppy mm. with everything. His first touch, his finishing, his decision-making is just <laughs> completely off, man. And I, and I think there's a, there's a vendetta against him also, Nabista, because if you look, even his mistakes for Uruguay is highlighted so much and, and, yeah. and shown all yeah. over. Yeah, it's it's. I always use it like with Van Dyke. If Van Dyke makes four mistakes and Maguire makes two, all these headlines will only be on Van Dyke. On Van Dyke, Van Dyke um, mm, Maguire's mm. Uh, Maguire's two Maguire's mistakes two, and not yeah. Van Dyke's four. Mm. Where Van yeah, Dyke mm. was worse than Maguire, but Maguire's reputation is already so patent with his cut brush that it's easy <laughs> to make money off just saying Maguire's mm. cut than saying Van Dyke's cut because Ivan Dyke's in a bounce back. But no one sees mm. that. Darwin, uh, Maguire, uh, or should I say Van Dyke, is just so uh, piss poor that mm. there's certain games where we lost the game or we drew the game because of Van Dyke. But you don't see that being the talk of the town because mm. Salah didn't score. That is your problem. There is problem. And you were the only one that's always been, the, the only one that's picked out Van Dyke. You picked it out against now, all of us, three new. Really. But now we can yeah. see that it was the bar it all along. Van Dyke mm. is really a problem where he is too easy on the ball. And I hate that. Everyone, I like that about him. He's so calm on the ball. We can play from the back. But there's certain games where you just can't do that. And you can see he's playing with a new centre-back every week, but he expects the same outcome from that centre-back that he did. Mm. With, when he plays Matip, he plays Gomez, he plays Konate. He expects the same thing, but it's not going to happen. Do you think Varane mm. is going to play as Los Cop? If Maguire is there, then when Martinez is there, no he way. because he knows. So Van mm. Dyke should come into that way. It's not just like for like. I need to step mm. up and be more alert and not just jockey every strike that runs at me. If I know I'm playing with Gomez, if I'm playing with Kunate, I can jockey any center back, any striker mm. because I know I got my, my bat is covered. But you're not going to get there from Gomez. Mm. Trent made mm. Gomez look like shit in the Champions mm. League. What do, Trent. Trent the, what do you think of Trent? Trent what do you think of Trent? What do you think of Trent? Trent should. He's, I think he's become complacent in the role that he's in, where he already set the bar up there, so he doesn't have to do anything more to be a better player. So he's trying to just keep it there. How do you walk back? How disrespectful is it for you to walk back when we're tracking back? Like, who do mm. you think you are, man? That's the problem that I have with Trent. Um, I said so, it. I said it, sorry, in the Champions League final when you guys faced Real Madrid, the first thing I said was, Vinicius Jr. is going to pounce on that because Trent pushes up, but he doesn't come back. And I, I can't help, but I see it every game. And it's frustrating because in this modern football, when you play that wing that's pushing up, the one thing they need to do is need to push back as well. And Trent yes. doesn't do that. Everybody pushes back and Trent just stands there. And, and, you, and I'm going to tell you now, you know why Trent's um, walking back is being exposed so bad is because Fabinho was off. Mm, Fabinho yeah, was the one that slots in he's there. He's so and then Fabinho, covered him. When Fabinho mm. is on top of his game, you don't see Trent exposed as much. And Trent thinks, if I'm going to have three assists in the next two games, I'm going to make up for that. Four goals are let in on my side. Which is not okay. We have Molnar starting a game now. 
then Trent is still doing that and walking back. And then we have a makeshift centre-back also in Joe Gomez, because I believe he's our replacement right-back. He's not our centre-back. We mm. have four centre-backs to choose from. The others are injured, so Gomez is slotting in there. If Matip Kunate and Van isn't playing, Nat Phillips isn't playing, Gomez shouldn't be there, but he is there. But Trent has mm. that same mentality of, it's Kunate playing, we have our best midfield. He has that same attitude. So he walks back mm. and he exposes them. If he does it to Konati, Konati doesn't make it obvious because he chops that ball out. So Trent mm. discovered that you're safe now. We didn't we didn't concede a goal, so no one's gonna make a big deal. But that is the mm. same problem with Van Dyke. There was games where we didn't concede goals, but we could have because he's so complacent on the ball and without mm. the ball. Everyone knows Van Dyke is gonna jockey jockey and time the tackle and then get the ball out. But what when he get, when he gets it wrong? Because if he plays against a Vinicius Junior or he plays against a Saka or he plays against Jaden mm. Sancho, where a space is running at you, and not just a lazy air striker is going to run at you, but someone that actually knows what he's doing. Mm. You can mm. jockey he's so far that he doesn't have control. You know, they say a centre-back must show the striker to his weaker foot. With these strikers, mm. you, there is no weaker foot. You mentioned no it with foot, Usman no. Dembele. No so foot you yeah. can't jockey that far from a striker in mm. any case. And there's many times that memes where Van Dijk is bent over like it because he's too far from the player. But because he's so mm. in control of the game in his head, he's got this whole situation under control. He can't make a mistake. So when it does happen, now we go to Trent, now we go to Gomez, now we go to the midfield, we go everywhere besides the problem. Mm. Then. Van yeah. Dijk is the actual fucking problem. The way he was jockeyed, because he's up there, he's been our best signing since we signed him and Allison because we needed that centre back. But at the he time. needed to evolve. Yeah, at the time. But as mm. the game evolved, he needed to like... Every game I must be better, I must be better, I must be better. Don't just go on You're facing Van Dijk now. Look at that game we had against um, for Netherlands. Brilliant Van Dijk. Brilliant mm. Van Dijk. And mm. that is, he needs to step up here. If this is, mm. I need to, you must have that same attitude by Liverpool. It mustn't just be the, mm. the ah, it's Liverpool, we lose, we draw, we can fight back again. Keep that consistency going. If Liverpool signs a right back now, that is going to keep Trent on his heels. We're going to see a Trent running back every time. But we don't have that. Mm. We don't have so a right back it... that's going to say, yay, Trent, if you're not going to play, we're going to put Gomez there. At the moment, we can't. Matip is at 100%, so he's actually our mix of centre-back. So, so you're saying it's, things, it's, it's, right? it's more complacent in the mentality. Yeah, yeah. Yes. it is complacent. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like yes, yes. There's nobody that's going to replace me, man. Mm. Yeah. It it is, is, yeah. I think it's the fact that he's playing with that mentality. And the fact that they also let Nico Williams go, that's also a big deal with Trent mm. because I've Nico Williams was, was brilliant competition to Trent, I feel. Yeah, I, I've seen the back pairing is someone and Van Dyke. Mm. That's just how yeah. it is. It's someone mm. and Van Dyke. It's not okay. the other way around. Yeah. We look at Varane. It's not someone and Varane or someone and mm. Martinez. Look at Man City. It's not someone and Johnstone, someone and Laporte, someone and Diaz. It's two centre-backs, who's going to play? We don't mm. know. Liverpool mm. is written down on the team sheet already. Van Dijk and one of the four. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And I feel that, I don't say it's a bad thing, but it shouldn't get to you as a player where you feel your performance should be, I'm going to start regardless of what Kaka catch on today. I'm complacent in this role. I'm going to start every game. So that attitude he brought there where he used to lift the players up. He could literally see him pick Gomez up as a youngster. And Gomez oh. was coming into the Liverpool team and you could see, whoa, look at this player that's taking um, Van Dijk, taking Gomez and putting him under his wing and grooming him mm. into a brilliant centre-back. And that is what we saw mm. when we got Van Dijk. But we don't see that anymore. It's almost like I gave you a few steps ahead. You needed to come up. You needed to be at this level already, Gomez. I can't help you anymore. You need to step up. Because we're fighting for each other now. It's not anymore of, I need to help you. He must still be that role model for that centre-back. Mm. Even Kunate. Kunate is so easy on the ball, but he's a youngster. Van Dijk mm. is the mm. only one of age at the back where you can say there's experience. And I expect him to lift, physically lift all of them up at the back. Whether it's left-back, right-back, or whoever's pairing up with him in centre-back. Because that is the reason we paid that big money for him. He is our captain mm. without the armband. Mm. And you need that mm. in the centre back, the, which Thiago Silva does brilliantly by Chelsea. I look at Chelsea again and I just look at the way Thiago mm. controls his players. That's Excellent. what Van Dyke did, but he doesn't do it anymore. So why not? And yeah. I feel that. We also, when, when Van Dyke, when, when Liverpool have a bad game and Van Dyke, he's, it's for the first time that I see that his head can actually drop. 
His head yeah, can drop. You've yeah. never seen yeah. that dive and dive. Uh, his head, his can, head drop, can actually yeah. drop. Especially against one Napoli. Player. Especially against Napoli. Yeah. The one player that we like... don't we don't get that from is Henderson. Henderson will fight until yeah. the end. Mm-hmm. And yeah, will fight. Yeah, they will fight and they will boost <laughs> their teams. Yeah, but they are the, like the OGs of the team. The mm-hmm. They're the OGs of the team. They know what they're fighting for. But I've never seen Van Dyke's head drop. I've never. Mm-hmm. Napoli well, for me was the first. Comes back to what yeah. Beast is, uh, is was saying about evolving. I mean, Thiago is old, but he evolved. Mm. In, as football yeah. evolves, as the game evolves, as the team changes, you need to change. You can't be the <laughs> same you were three seasons. And I, this is I where respect- I take off my hat mm. to, to the old defenders like Chialini. Them. They've been playing since we get 2006. Yeah. Well but on the last days, they were still the best because they adapted. As the game changed, they changed mm. the mentality and the way they need to play to be better and to help the team. But I, no. it comes back to you don't see that from Van Dijk. He still thinks mm. he needs to play like three seasons ago. And I think that yeah. is where the problem is. And you know how, how much respect I put on a player like Thiago Silva that comes into the best league in the world, mm. debatable. At that age. League. At it's that mm. age and being the last line of defense. It's not coming in as a, out Thiago in the midfield. You can make a mistake there. It's not that much of a big deal. You can be a strike. You can miss a chance or two. It's not, you don't have to step up and control the whole game. But Thiago mm. came in as a centre-back at that age into a league it is never played in. And mm. that, for me, is pressure. Not buying mm. a striker like the Owen Nunes and expecting hat every week. Yeah. Because if he doesn't score, someone else is going to. Thiago mm. Silva messes up a game, they can't see two goals. Exactly, they can't see it, yeah. Mm. No, I like it. Like, I must admit, that's the most honest, scathing... I wouldn't call it a rant. Ranting is what I do. Um, <laughs> but that's the most yeah. honest assessment I've ever seen of Van Dyke. I'm actually going to clip that section. Um, your prediction, though. Give me your prediction. 3 in Liverpool. 3 in Liverpool. So after that, a whole scathing attack you put in. <laughs> 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 because it's Brighton, yeah. bro. It's Brighton. They can hurt you, Brighton bro. Will like the manager. But... Like, Anyways, like I, said, I, I respect them for where they are on the table, yeah. but Liverpool is bruised. Liverpool is a dog that has been down for the past few weeks, and they're busy coming up. Bournemouth was that nine goals shouldn't have been nine, and I think that just set the precedent of what Liverpool can do. But I feel for Bournemouth because that wasn't a fair result towards them. I don't feel they deserve to lose by nine because our performance wasn't that brilliant. You get what you get, bro. You get what you get. You get what you get. You play stupid games. You play stupid games. You prizes, bro. You get what you get. I feel 3 1, 3 1 to Liverpool. I'm going. I say 3 1. I say 3 1. I'm at your score, Liverpool, Brighton. Liverpool bouncing back, but not 3. 2. 2 0. 2 1. Oh, 2 0. 2 0. 2 0. To know. To Liverpool, I, I, I think Liverpool definitely can bounce back. I don't think Liverpool is a team that you can just write off. I mean, the, the league can't. barely started. You can't write them off yeah. ever, ever. Mm. Uh, they didn't really kick off. Everybody's going to have the ups and downs. The team that, that is that is flying is not the team that's going to be flying at the end of the season. You never know. It's okay. the Premier League. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like I'm direct shooting you there, Debbie. <laughs> no, 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 I agree with you. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. But I've but, I've been giving it the big end to them in our group just because I'm at top and I'm just enjoying it. But I know for a fact, come May, I'm not gonna be there in any case. So, so for for me, I feel Liverpool two 0 and I I really hope I hope and I pray for the sake of Darwin Nunes that he really steps up the game. Because if he doesn't step up against a Brighton who's barely manager or half manager or whatever they have now. If he doesn't come up and prove himself against Brighton, then I don't know what what he needs or what he wants. So uh, he needs I, to I, Brighton I the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> Let's come on to the other one, like we called it, the big derby. Um, Arsenal Spurs. I don't know where to start. Look, I don't know if you guys checked my preview out with Bram. Um, I still need to edit that video, um, but for me, you know, you guys know how I usually give it the begin, like I'm going to be confident. This is the first derby, and I said this to Bram as well, that I'm not confident going into this one. I, 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 I'm more anxious, nervous, fearful that Spurs can hurt me. 
I know it's at our home ground, but because our score against Manchester United, where we played into their hands, I feel because the crowd's going to be on Arteta's neck if it should be 1-1 with, 18, with 10 minutes to go. He's going to be forced again to make a change to get on the front foot. I feel that might play into Conte's hands. I don't know, Benny B, I'll start with you. How do you how do you see this game going, my bro? Am I right to feel this anxious or what? No, you were more confident last season and Arsenal was in a way no. worse position exactly. against Spurs. Mm. And exactly. Everything involved Arsenal was way below Spurs last season. And now that you're top of the log and like I say, the league is yours to lose. <laughs> you are not confident at all. I'd I don't know where to go with this derby. Nobody can predict what can happen. And I feel that a draw would be the best result for both teams than to lose. I, don't I think it's going to be a draw. I think it's going to be a high scoring draw. I want to win the energy. opportunity that I get, bro. I don't know why I feel that same energy that when you look at this, 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 this London derby, you feel that draw, man. You feel that both oh, yeah. the ability, you feel that both team has ability to score, but and both of them are good at attacking, but none of them has the ability to win it. And none of them want to lose this game. And none of them wants none to lose of them it. want to lose this game. It's gonna be something like a two-two or a three-three. It's gonna be a crazy London derby. It's gonna be a back and forth. Um you attack, I attack situation is gonna be almost non existent. <laughs> you mean Bram? <laughs> Bram, yeah, I mean Bram, yeah. So, um, I think it's going to be like a 3-3 situation. 3-3 draw. Yeah, uh, I said the same thing to Bram earlier. It could either be one or two. This could either be a ball fist like you guys alluded to now. No one wants to lose. So, we're just going to sit and be compact. We'll get out of here with a draw and move on to the next one. Or oh, it's going to be a high scoring affair. Peace around How do you see this one going, Maji? 2-1 Arsenal. Spurs score late when it's 2-0 already. And Spurs just scores a consolation. Jesus, but what I'd give, what I'd give I, for that to happen, my bro. Nah, Spurs has not been convincing. Besides the Son Atherick, Spurs hasn't looked convincing if I compare the two teams. I know it's Derby, form is out the window, but who has seen Arsenal in a better run of form than this season? What better time? Mm. That's why I don't understand why you're anxious. What, like Benny said, this yeah, yeah, I did, like he is. Not be anxious, if, but he is. If I take it in four seasons, this should be the best you should feel about a North London derby. I just shows you the Easter last season, it was delusional. <laughs> I don't know. Last year, I was more confident going into this one. But I don't know. For some other reason, I just have a bad feeling. I don't know why. I genuinely... It, I genuinely... it comes with the territory of being top. I think it's that also as well, that you know if it you're going to lose. Because... Yeah, normally when you when you when you bottom of the log, say you you six like with us in Brighton now. If we should lose, it's not going to be a big surprise mm. because we've lost our previous games in the season also. But if you lose to Spurs, it's going to be a big thing because you lost to United. Regardless of what you did to the other teams you played before you got United, the big exactly. thing is you lost. That comes with it. You are top, so the focus mm. is more on you for being on top. And if you're going to slip up, sit is on your case. Sit is on your case. So you need to win the prizes on you. It's anxiety, so, Vista. It's anxiety. Yeah. Elephants would feel anxious if they're on top of a tree. It's exactly the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's anxiety. But I, I but hope yeah, it goes 2-1. 2-1 two, two. Two, Arsenal. 2-1 two, Arsenal. Any B, how do you see this one going, Maji? 2-2. Two, two. I see I'm a draw. 3-3. Three, three. I see a draw as well. Penny, I'm with you on that. Draw. Yep. Like like I told Bram, he said um with his with his heart he's gonna go for a draw and his head is gonna go for Arsenal. He would Arsenal say that. Win. He would say I, that. He would say I'm that. Going, he going, says that like, because he knows he's gonna get a fuck and then you don't have to fight yeah. But but he will say that on the thing that. but in the chat he will check the friendship. Yeah. In the chat he'll say, <laughs> Wait, you know? Same energy, Buddha, same energy. <laughs> hey, what's again, you know, uh, my, head, my head also goes with a draw my heart wants to go 2-1 but if I have to go out on a limb I'm also going to go with a 2-2 really. I, I genuinely feel nervous really for the first time for a derby in a while I feel nervous usually the home team wins this one but because they have that contact factor 
I just feel that they 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 know how to to get something out of a game where they're not where they're not playing well, and that's that's a massive. They problem. do. Have, they do. I have match. Tottenham can beat any team Monday day. Any team yeah, playing good or bad. Mentality. Conte. That's Conte that's mentality. Conte mentality. That's the thing because of Conte. But um, yeah, we've, we've wrapped it up basically. Um, final thoughts. I'll start with Ahmad, our special guest that decided to jump on. <laughs> final thoughts, my bro. On? Just in general. Final thoughts. In general. Yeah. In general, final thoughts if I have. In closing, bro. In closing, closing in other words. Bro. In conclusion. In conclusion, let me focus on La Liga here quick. For I have to say, player of the month for La Liga, if we if we, if we want to make it a topic, Fede Valverde. Wow, for Real Madrid. Uh, Way brilliant player. Where's Fede Why Valverde player? been? He's Did you see that goal that he scored? I think it was last week or yeah. two weeks ago at that yes. solo. Yeah, two weeks ran ago, back, yeah. took the ball from, from, the, the, from the box. <laughs> from the back, he took it off, ran right through the whole team and scored. But not just that. Game in the game, I'd be doing the same thing. When the team is counter-taking, Fede Valverde takes off the ball. He runs, he's in the mid, he's giving the ball through. The second chance comes, Fede Valverde is there again for the tap in. He's been everywhere. It's it's so shocking. And that's that's what I'm, I'm more scared about Fede Valverde in the El Clasico than what I am about Kai Benzema, to be honest. The, the, wow. He's going to be... Him and Kamavinga and Vinicius Jr. is, is the three that I'm scared of because they are on such a high right now. I don't know how we're going to stop this. The and Chao Mendy. Really don't, 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 don't discard Chao Mendy, bro. Chao Mendy is one. Mm. No, I criticized Madrid uh, 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 a season or two ago. I told them, you can't keep on with this aging mid with this Luka Modric and Kroos. Luka Modric and Kroos is sitting bench and watching this like this do the exact same thing. Yeah, but these yeah, ladies are, are, are learning from Luka Modric and Kroos now. Luka Modric and Kroos, exactly. These ladies like, are learning from them now. Mm. The scary they are basically like, replaced. Oh, oh. Look how Madrid's and Kroos comes on and then it just kills it from there. Uh, Madrid yep. is on such a high run of form now. I, I find it difficult for them to lose anything. But I don't predict El Clasico. I never have predicted El Clasico. But um, if I'm going to predict this El Clasico, it's going to have to be a do. I think we both are on, on our best run of forms this year. No, 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 don't give you a El Clasico prediction. I have special things planned for you for El Clasico. Don't, don't jump the gun. Don't, Trust don't, don't, me. Don't, don't. Trust you're not going to run, you're not gonna run like that. You're not going to cop out like that. Don't worry. Uh, 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 you're not going to cop out like that. The me. next uh, prediction is going to be different. <laughs> I can never make up my mind with El Clasico. I, uh, I, I uh, don't you know can't cop out like that. Uh, I don't <laughs> run. Really. The Clasico, I'm going to have you and I got my own Real Madrid fan jumping on the same pod because that's going to be the game of the week. Nice. Don't worry. Nice. Um, but yeah, love for the love. Beast and only Esca, <laughs> Nah, no It's good call. to be back. We, we know when the pod is back, English football is back. So we're excited mm-hmm. for this weekend. And what a way, like two derbies coming in in the first weekend back from international break. We watched a few good international games, but it's not the same. We all know it's not the same. The yeah. Spain can play Portugal. Germany can play England. It's not the same. We mm-hmm. want never going to be the same. Football back. Yeah. So, but yeah, it is more competitive than the beast. It's, 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 it's yeah. a lot better than the, your, your regular friendly. Yeah. So, yeah, shout a lot to everyone in the comments. It's again full up here tonight. Yo, I'm surprised. <laughs> I didn't even get through all those comments. I'm going to read probably after the show only because there's so many comments <laughs> in here. And I just see Bradley, 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 Bradley. <laughs> but shout <laughs> a lot. I'm also jumping on. We said three, four pods ago that we want to get every week, every month, if we can have a guest mm. on. Someone that's always in the comments, have him on the show. It's great to get yeah. um, the, the, the content from other people as well and not just sitting in the comments and giving a comment now and then, mm. but actually... Mm being together with us in conversation. So it's something we look forward to. But yeah, thanks a lot for the show, Debbie. And we see each other on Saturday, Sunday for the football. Uh, love for the love, brother. I couldn't agree with you more. And um, I am going to be doing it now a lot. Actually, I'm going to be posting the link in the comments. I also want to give out a big um, shout out to everyone that made the, the success at Premium. Uh, an awesome show. Um, that goes to you, Beast, that goes to you, Ben, that goes to you, Ahmad, that goes to everybody in the comment section, that goes to Hani, that goes to LFC Girl, that goes to Ricky, that goes to Neil. It was an awesome show, really, and there's going to be more of that coming soon. Um, there'll be more topics, per se, related to that, whenever, obviously, as the big games go around, but 
for me personally, I just want to thank everybody for the support. Basically, I'm not going to lie. I missed you guys. Really, I miss the comments. I miss sitting like this. I feel now my week has actually got to a point of normalcy. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's up to you. Take us home, my G. Take us home. Like, like the Easter said so perfectly, once you see us, you see the English Premier League. They back, bitches. <laughs> they back. Life cannot go back to normal. We do not know what the fuck to do with ourselves. <laughs> yeah, the stuff that we <laughs> For real. But, but uh, we, are, we are back. We are back. Life can now continue. God is good. Mwah. Thanks to everyone in the comments. Thank you again, once again, DVD. Ahmad, nice having you on, bro. It's not the loss. Definitely not the loss. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Mr. Benny, David. We will be partying next week. Also, can't wait to watch your preview with Bram the Man. Uh, your Derby preview. Put uh, up the links. Let us, let us, let us. Like, sub, and shit. There you go. I'm not too happy with that live, so I need to download that video and edit it. But that I'll do tomorrow and then upload it and I'll do it, do it nicely. But yeah, like you said, like, share, and sub. You know the thing, what it is. Shout James. Mwah. I love, I love James. We'll see each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bless. Go, go. Have an awesome one. No, Thursday. Thursday, no? It's Champions League next week. Yeah, it is. Yeah. No, no, no. Thursday is the Europa, isn't it? You need to see what time. Oh, fuck yeah, but fuck the Europa. Fuck the Europa. Fuck the Europa. Thursday it is. Thursday it is. Thursday it is. Thursday it is.